welcome back to the workshop. I hope you're all doing well. Now in this video, I'm gonna be making some garden screens. I'm gonna be adding these to my arbor, but you could use these as privacy screens or maybe windbreaks, things like that for your garden. Now this is kind of part two to the project that I'm working on. So if you have not seen the garden arbor, video, I suggest you go watch that first because a lot of the techniques that I use to make these screens are going to in-depth in that video. This video is going to be much quicker, it's going to be a much shorter video because it's essentially replicating the exact same process to build these two screens, so just larger sides of the arbor with a few little extra details and a few little extra bits that I have added in. So hopefully you've enjoyed the video guys, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you are new here. So without further ado, let's get on and build some garage garden screens and add them to the garden arbor. Right, so let's crack on with our garden screens. Now, as I probably said already, I'm gonna keep this nice and short because I've covered most of this in the previous video. So definitely go back and check out the garden arbor. I'm gonna kind of run through this quickly. So when using the same materials as we used the last time, I have some two by one pressure treated lats, which I've ripped down into one by one. I have four by two uh, pressure treated timber, which we're gonna use for the main frame of these garden screens or these garden fences. And I have some pre-made trellis. This time it is 900 millimeters or three foot wide as opposed to 600 mil or two foot wide. And that's exactly what we want to use to make our components for this. Now, in the last video, I told you that I was paying 10.99 for a 16 foot or 4.8 meter length of four by two. This week I'm paying 13 90. So it's gone up three euros a length in one week. This is May 2022 and it's exactly one week after I made the arbor. So one length of this has gone up by three euros. That's nearly a 30% increase in one week. So there you go. Timber is getting ridiculous. And uh, yeah, so kind of grab it while you can. Look around, get the best deal you can. If you get some previous stock, you might get it cheaper. If they get a new delivery in, it's probably going to be more expensive. So that's the way it is at the minute. Prices don't last more than a week. So anyway, let's get on, make our frames exactly the same way as we did for the arbor. So let's do it. Okay, so just like the garden arbor, I'm gonna make these frames. I'm gonna screw it together, put the trellis in the middle, keep it face down so it's flush with the outside. And it's just a case of screw these together. So cut your cross pieces the same width as your trellis and your uprights as long as you need them to be. The height of your fence plus whatever you want to leave in the ground. Nice and simple. I'm not gonna belabor this because I covered it already. So I'm gonna screw all this together and get the trellis fixed in place. Okay, so the frame is screwed together just like before. I've put the lats on the inside now, so the two by ones that I've cut down to the one by ones, again, just exactly the same as the arbor. Put them on the inside, I'm gonna nail them in place with the staple gun, and then I'm gonna staple the trellis to that. So, nice and simple, just like before. Okay guys, the only thing I'm doing different this time is adding some 45 degree blocks into the corner. Now they sit slightly proud, but this is to the back. They're not really going to be seen, but they will add some strength to the frame. I've added a couple of more 45s to the arbor, which I'll show you at the end of this video as well. But again, just to help keep this thing strengthened up and to kind of keep these things hidden, I've kept them nice and short. I'm just gonna reinforce these corners. Every little helps, as they say. Okay guys, there's one garden screen all complete, ready to be set in the ground next to the arbor. Now I wanna add some decorative pieces to the top of this. I haven't decided exactly what I wanna do, but I wanna try and match what's on the arbor. So we're gonna try and do that. Now I have two more of these to make, so I'll get on and do that. And when they're done, we'll jump back in. Hi right, guys, because I'm using pre-made trellis and I'm not making my own, I'm gonna to have to cut one of these down in order to get two of them side by side. So one of my actual screens are gonna be slightly narrower in order to get two of them in the one space. I have a predetermined space and uh, buying pre-made things, they don't exactly fit in. So I just gotta do a little bit of doctoring on this. So just giving it, a, a running along with the pull saw. I'm just gonna take one section off this. 
Okay guys, all three screens are complete. They're now up in place. So just like before, I dug some holes. I treated the bottom of them with some creosote, just a bit of extra protection for legs going into the ground or timber going into the ground. You wanna make sure if you're getting treatment that it is for in-ground contact. Some of the wood preservers are not for in-ground contact, but creosote is. It's basically this stuff. They coat the telephone poles in before they stick them in the ground or they soak them in that stuff. So that's what I've added to the base of them. Then I just put some K-post in again, and K-post is really handy. It just, you can throw it in dry and you can just drop some water in around it. Post mix, K-post, there's loads of different names. Just ask for post mix at your local builders, providers. They'll know exactly what you are. A couple of bags of that are what you want. Uh, a couple of bags of that is all you need. So I've just screwed everything in place screwed it through my shade, lined everything up so it's good to go. But the tops of it look a little plain, so I'm not overly happy with how the top of the um, actual screens look. So I kind of want to replicate what I did with the top of the arbor, just a kind of smaller version. So I think it's going to be worth the extra work if we do that. So let's crack on and do it. Okay, so the plan for the top of our screens to kind of replicate what we've done with the arbor is just to put a 2x4 or 4x2 both sides to kind of replicate what we've done with the 6x2 and then we're going to cross it with some 4x2s. I think it's going to look nice and again it's just going to repeat the kind of pattern that we have on top of the arbor, It'll just be a smaller version. So I have a couple of these to cut and put a couple of curve cuts in the end of it just like we did with the arbor. So I'm going to crack on and do that. It's exactly the same as the arbor video so I won't bore you guys with that. And then when it comes to notching we have to do two notches instead of one so I'll show you that. So I'll get on and cut these out now and we'll jump back in when they're done. Okay guys, so just cut the 4x2s to length and put a couple of detailed cuts in them the exact same way as I did with the arbor. Now I've just screwed one on both sides and I think that's where I'm going to leave it. I've just put one on top of the garden screens, both sides. It frames them off nicely. I think that just finishes them nicely. I'm not going to put the cross pieces in the same way as I do with the arbor. I think less is more. Let the arbor be the center piece and they just frame it off nicely. When I saw the two pieces up, I said, that's enough. Don't do any more with that. It, again, it just looks nice at the top of the screen. And again, it just frames it off. So that's exactly where I'm going to leave it. Okay guys, there we go, one garden arbor and some garden screens all complete. Now these are nice and handy to build. Again, it's just like building the garden arbor and you could use these for privacy screens, you could use these for wind protection, something like that if you need that for your garden. I've just built it either side of my arbor because it rails off the end of the garden where I'm going to be growing all my vegetables. Haven't decided whether I paint them yet or not. I think I might leave them the clear color, I'm not sure. But I have a good bit to go on this project, that's kind of part two done now. So I have a U-shaped um, raised bed to build there, an L-shaped raised bed to build on this side. I have a shed that I have to paint and clean up. So I have a good bit of cleaning up to do here. I have a gate to build over this side where my workshop is. So that has to be continued over there. But uh, yeah, it kind of separates the garden into two halves now. So that's going to be where all the vegetables are grown, like I said. And this is kind of the other part of the garden. And it cleans up that end because it's going to be kind of messy in there where I'm growing all my vegetables. So there you go, guys. Now, for all you guys who wanted to see how the vegetables are going, let me show you that now. Right, for all you guys wanting to know about my vegetables, here's how I am getting on. So this planter has been working absolutely fantastic. So I have my tomato plants here, they're really taken off. I have peppers here, I have coriander here, basil, lettuce, although my lettuce hasn't started off. I have some spring onions in here and just some salad potatoes here. So that's what I have in the planter with the hoop house or polytunnel on top. It really does get hot in here. So I'm actually just propagating some peppers as well in here or some chilies. So hopefully I'm going to get some really nice hot chilies to grow inside in this hoop house as well. So yeah, there we go. Let me show you the vegetable trough and how that's going. Okay guys, here is the vegetable trough. So you can see I've potatoes down the middle here. These have really exploded in the last few weeks. Then we have some onion sets in here. They're really growing. And I have some spinach up here starting to take off. Red lettuce in there. And we also have some leeks coming up as well. And as soon as these potatoes are, are done, in another three weeks, four weeks, they should be done. I can get some more in there and get some more stuff out of this. So you should get about, you know, 40 to 50 kilos of vegetables out of a plant of this size is absolutely possible. Started off my strawberries there. So that's what I have here. It's all just outside my workshop. So yeah, there we go. For all you guys curious of how the vegetables are going, there you go.